please give a warm welcome to Dr. Seth Cohen. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Seth Cohen. I'm a program manager in the Biological Technologies Office at DARPA, but more importantly, I'm a really proud member of UCSD's faculty. I'm a member of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, and I've been at DARPA for about three and a half years serving as a program manager. I'm actually super excited today because most of my research group at UCSD is here and is finally learning about what I've been doing in DC for the last three years. So it's great that they're here and I really appreciate their presence. My role today is actually to give a virtual introduction to a virtual speaker. So our speaker today is Dr. Jay Kiesling from UC Berkeley. He couldn't be here in person and is giving a short lightning talk on synthetic biology. You'll see his PowerPoint slides and hear his voiceover, but you won't see his pretty face, so you're getting to see mine as I give this virtual introduction. So uh, Jay is, as I mentioned, a professor of chemical and bioengineering at UC Berkeley. He's also the CEO of JBay, the Joint Bioenergy Bio Institute, which is a large DOE-funded center. And Jay is really, really well known for his, um, his prominence and expertise in synthetic biology, particularly metabolic engineering, um, which Jay Bay centers around, sort of focused on fuels. Um, I think probably Jay's, one of his most notable accomplishments was the bioengineering of the production of artemisinin, which is a complex natural product and a really important anti-malarial drug. And so he was able to engineer that into certain microorganisms for its production and got a lot of notoriety for that. Um, he's also a member of the National Academy of Engineering. He's had a very illustrious career, although I would say the pinnacle of it was that he was the outside committee member for my PhD thesis, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, so without further ado, uh, an area that DARPA is extremely interested in, synthetic biology, Professor Jay Kiesling. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jay Kiesling, and today I'm going to be talking about engineering polyketide synthesis for production of commodity and specialty chemicals. I think most of you know that nearly all the fuels we use, as well as the materials that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, come from petroleum. We'd like to have a more renewable resource for producing those fuels and other products. If those fuels are burned, we're returning carbon to the atmosphere. And in this way, the fuels can become carbon neutral. If you sink carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into a variety of products that you don't burn or return the carbon to the atmosphere, then those products become carbon negative. We know how to produce a lot of fuels using biology um, and produce them from a renewable resource. What has been more challenging is producing a variety of chemicals from renewable resources because those chemicals have to have functionality um, that will allow them to be polymerized into the various products that we need to make. My laboratory has been working on engineering polyketide synthesis for producing these materials precursors. Polyketides are uh, a large class of natural products that are produced by soil dwelling and aquatic microorganisms. And they have all kinds of functionality on them that would be useful in producing these precursors to materials. Type one polyketide synthases produce the polyketides using very large proteins that are modules or modular. And each module in the protein encodes two carbons in the backbone plus the functionality hanging off of it. If you could take the polyketide synthase modules from these soil dwelling microbes, put them together in new ways express those genes in microbial hosts, then you would be able to produce a variety of chemicals from sugars in fermentations. <clears throat> now, there are thousands of microbes that have been sequenced, and in those microbes are, in some cases, many different polyketide synthases. We could put those modules from those polyketide synthases together in new ways to produce literally billions of different products. For example, Polyesters have been useful in producing a variety of plastics and uh, other, other fabrics. You, could, you can make polyesters using hydroxy acids. So my laboratory has built polyketide synthases uh, from the lipomycin PKS and the erythromycin PKS that will produce these hydroxy acids. And by choosing the load module and the extension module, carefully, you can produce hydroxy acids with a variety of functionalities, 
on the three carbon as well as functionality on the two carbon. We've also been working on adipic acid, which is a monomer to nylon six. By putting together modules from three different polyketide synthases into a final adipic acid PKS, we could then engineer bacteria to produce adipic acid from simple sugars. More recently, we've been working with Brett Helms, Kristen Person, and Corinne Scown, all of Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and the University of California, Berkeley, to produce a new class of recyclable plastics called polydiketoenamines, or PDKs. These PDKs are very interesting plastics because they can be readily recycled using a simple pH change like uh, adipic, like, like acid, sulfuric acid, for instance. And you can then re, um, uh, you can remove the, anything that's added to those plastics and recover the monomers. And this just shows how useful these plastics are. Even if they have dyes in them, you can remove the dyes and get the monomers, monomers back in pure form, or if they have some type of embedded fiber in them. Now, what my laboratory is doing is engineering hybrid polyketide synthesis um, from a variety of different uh, microorganisms to produce novel polyketide synthesis encode those genes into a variety of bacterial hosts that will produce uh, beta-keto delta lactones that are monomers to the PDK plastics. And these give these PDK plastics interesting properties. So in summary, polyketide synthesis can be used to produce a variety of different existing materials as well as new materials. And I'd like to acknowledge the people in my laboratory that worked on this, as well as funding from a variety of sources.